In this video, we'll understand what slew rate is and what its implications on operational amplifiers are. Consider an op amp configured in a voltage follower configuration. Suppose we give a pulse input which varies from 0 to 5 volts to this circuit. As the output follows the input, we expect the output to become a pulse instantly as well. However, in reality, the output does not change from 0 to 5 volts instantaneously. Similarly, the output does not fall from 5 volts to 0 at the negative edge instantaneously. This phenomenon is called slewing. The maximum rate at which the output of the op amp can change is called the slew rate. The unit for slew rate is volts per seconds. However, we usually measure slew rate in terms of volts per microseconds for convenience. As we want the output to change instantaneously, we want the slew rate to be as high as possible, ideally infinity. Slewing happens due to the internal compensation capacitor of the op amp. The capacitor takes some time to charge and discharge, which leads to a delay in the output. Let's see be the value of the internal compensation capacitance. Then, the charging current IC through the capacitor is given by C into dVC by dT, where VC is the voltage across the capacitor. Rearranging, we get dVC by dT is equal to IC by C. dVC by dT is the rate of change of voltage across the capacitor. Hence, the slew rate is given by IC by C. That is the charging or discharging current upon the value of the compensation capacitance. Usually, we consider the value of positive and negative slew rates as the same. Let's see the effect of slew rate on a pulse signal. Suppose we have a pulse of duration 10 microseconds and amplitude 5 volts. Suppose the slew rate of the op amp is 1 volt per microsecond. Then the output will be a ramp. As the slew rate is 1 volt per microsecond, it will take 5 microseconds to reach 5 volts. After that, the output will stay constant at 5 volts, until the negative edge of the input. After this, the voltage will fall at a rate of 1 volt per microsecond. Hence, it will take 5 microseconds to become 0 again. Now consider a case, in which the slew rate is 0.5 volts per microsecond. In this case, the output will take 10 microseconds to reach 5 volts. Hence, the output will just touch 5 volt and again fall down to 0. Suppose the slew rate reduces further to 0.3 volts per microsecond. In this case, at the end of 10 microseconds, the output will have only reached a value of 3 volts. Hence, the voltage never reaches 5 volts. At the negative edge, it starts reducing from 3 volts back to 0 volts. Now consider the case of a sinusoidal signal as an input to the voltage follower. Suppose the maximum amplitude of the signal is Vmax. Then the equation of the signal can be written as Vmax sin omega t. Differentiating this with respect to time will give us the rate of change of voltage. dV by dt is equal to Vmax omega, cosine of omega t. The maximum value of this is Vmax into omega. Hence, we require an op amp whose slew rate is greater than or equal to this value. Omega can also be written as 2 pi f. Hence minimum slew rate is equal to 2 pi into f into Vmax. Alternatively, the maximum value of frequency we can give as input to this circuit without distortions is, slew rate upon 2 pi into Vmax. If we violate the slew rate condition, we will get an oscillating ramp output instead of a sinusoidal output. For example, if we have a sinusoidal output with 10 volts amplitude and a frequency of 20 kHz, then the minimum slew rate required will be 2 pi into 20,000 into 10, which comes out to 1.257 into 10 to the power 6 volts per second. That is 1.257 volts per microseconds. If the slew rate of the op amp is greater than this value, the output will follow the input perfectly. That's all for this video. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask in the comments section below. 
Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.